Barber shops have a long history. Going back to ancient Egypt, barbers would practice their craft out in the marketplace. And they would style and help others and join the community together. And then they evolved. Women went out and found beauty parlors. And they found this community, not just a barber shop anymore, but this beauty parlor where they could have a safe environment and solve local problems. <laughs> Today, we, uh, we have maker spaces, sometimes called fab labs. And in these fab labs, we find a community, a community of builders and makers, and they also solve problems where they help each other and push each other's limits. And it's by pushing these limits that they go through and uh, design new things that we see out anywhere in our, uh, in our hands. I mean, it could be this little pointer or the phone that's in your back pocket. And everybody did turn it off, right? <laughs> you see makers of all sorts, of all kinds coming around. Well, they go through and use various tools, from 3D printers to laser cutters, from traditional saws and the computers. The 3D printer is right now the hotbed button as far as uh, these types of tools. And 3D printers have, become, have reached a price point that is so low that anybody here could actually afford them. The beauty of them is they've become so small and easy to use. The software is simple, and the pricing is available for us all. Well, we use them for various different purposes. So let me tell you about a few of them. Wade, he came into our shop at one point, and he wanted to replace his refrigerator door handles. The handles were broken beyond any kind of repair. And when we looked at them, we said, OK, we can take a few measurements, design it up, and a few days later, we had his new handles. He was absolutely ecstatic. I mean, imagine, he just went from using a piece of rope to open the door <laughs> to these handles that worked effectively. Other times, we, we see other projects coming through. So now imagine yourself coming into a makerspace and get yourself sized for a cast or a splint. These types are much more comfortable than what you would use uh, a regular plaster cast. But eventually, I, have, I didn't make one myself, but we did make one for a little turtle. And this little guy is hobbling along much better than before. And so there's other projects that come into our workshop as well. We also helped a mother. She was looking for some parts for her daughter, her daughter Faith. And Faith needed, well, an arm and a hand to be specific. Faith had congenital abnormality of the arm. She was born this way. And at, after about nine months, the doctors had to amputate her arm just below the elbow. I mean, just imagine, as a parent, struggling to make this decision. And so, Faith grew up most of her life. She did have prosthetics, but they were kind of clunky and heavy and just difficult to use. She was growing so much, and she couldn't uh, adapt to them because they were the wrong size. And so the insurance companies didn't have a new one for her quite yet. But we ended up helping her in the end. And so after, uh, after three days of printing, we ended up creating an arm for Faith. It took three weeks to go through and size it and fit it and make sure everything was in working order. And then uh, the best part, it was just a pound. I mean, imagine, she now could get, she could hold on and maybe bike or color. And so here is Faith. On March 31st, 2015, just this year, she received her arm. And guess what? She got to color and she also rode her bike that day. There are many organizations out there that can help with this. There are organizations that have designs, and there are also recipients that need these arms. But the best part, you know how earlier I talked about 3D printers? Well, you can go through and access these 3D printers and get the arm directly to somebody. 
And here's a little bit about organizations that help. So you see with organizations like this, and just the ability to have the power of 3D printing, to, the future is already here. We can access, access these machines. We can help others. We can form communities, be it in a maker space or throughout. We can go through and just, there, we can go through and just help one another, because we all know that there's just so much to be done. And so let's do it together. Let's not get in the way of our own potential. Let's also think more like kids, because kids, they don't, they don't allow anything to stop them. And that's what we should be doing. We should be going through and finding things like this, helping others, and uh, giving them just the access, access to use their arms again. There's so much that can be done, and, we, and it's just about what's gonna happen next. Thank you.